click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hi there friends, today we will discuss about the basic concept behind designing a database. That is the overview of a design process. We will discuss the two phases. One is the design phase and next is the alternative phase that we can see while designing and which alternative we should choose based on the need of the database. As we know that design to database, that means we first need that what is a database? A database is a collection of related information or data. Now when we talk about a relation on the data or the information, then we are actually specifying that we need to concern of a particular enterprise. It can be an university, it can be a bank, it can be an employer. So anything, a particular related information can only be gathered on a set of related enterprises. Now, to talk about the database, we first need to collect all the conceptual and physical data that we can have to conform with the database. Now, what should we do for designing the database? We should find, observe the database or the company's need. So first, the enterprise should be observed and then mentioned that what are the data set we should collect on that particular enterprise. Next, we should form the field and attributes of the database. That is, for example, say for an enterprise or bank, we need the customer, the employer, the account details, and very much other details on a particular enterprise. So for collection of this, we need to consider it as a field or attribute. Now this is on a conceptual basis that we can have it. Now when we are forming the actual database, we need the real life data in it. So when we talk about a data or an information that are the particular values to the field, say for an example, the customer can be of the customer name, the address of a customer, the contact number of a customer. The employer has got that which position he is being working for. The accounts can be the savings, current or loan account. In this way, we need the actual values to these attributes. So that are the database formation. So that all together it will form a perfect database. But not only just doing the research on an enterprise, putting the attributes in the field, and then putting all the actual values will not make a good database. We need to design a database in such a way so that we can achieve at a query on a later basis and give the exact result in a smoother way. Say for example, when we go and to try withdraw an amount from our account in a bank. So the employer just puts our account number and gets all the details of the money that is as a balance or what money we have withdrawn, we have secured a minimum balance or not and all this information. Now, this is the example of a good database that when we are querying on the database, it will result in a smoother way of the exact demand for the user. Now to go on, we will first move to the design phase. Now the design phase starts with thinking what are the fields that we have in the enterprise. That is the work of a designer or the function of a designer that to think elaboratively what are the fields that we could include in each sector of the enterprise. What I mean by sector when I am talking about say account. So the account are the sector and the fields could be savings, current and the loan account. Now when we talk about a customer, he is he a depositor or a borrower to the bank. So we need to categorize it in each of the sector that is the first important task of the designer that he needs to think about it elaboratively. Now when he has expanded all the parts of each of the sector in the enterprise, it's the first task to design them in a table manner, on a relative manner. 
that what way each of the field gets related to each other. Like the customer should have a relation with the account sector, in what way that he is a depositor to the account or borrower to the account. So in every way we need to find what are the possible relation that we can make up with this of field on the particular enterprise. Now after that we have got all the relation on the fields, we need to put it in a manner so that we can fetch data from it and also insert data from it in a meaningful and smooth manner. Now in this initial phase of designing, the domain experts should give their value or opinion about what are the choices of the field and what are the positive feedback on that particular field. So there a survey is needed on a particular enterprise that what information we have given the domain expert and what domain or what range of value we can give on that particular field. So the domain expert will confirm us, for example, say the account, it can be only of the three types, savings, current or loan. So it is the function of now the domain expert which have transferred to to give domain of each of the field on that table or a relation. Now that we have formed the relation between the fields, the domain of each field, we will now move to the next stage that is the initial phase of conceptual schema. Schema means that there can be more than one relation or table while designing a database. It is not absolutely recommend to have only a large table because it will consist of many problems like the redundancy, inatomicity, inconsistency, incompleteness. We will discuss it later. But for now, we are telling that a large table in a single database is not recommended at all. We should divide it by small relations so that we can put the relationship among them and also store the data in a meaningful and smooth way. So the conceptual schema of every table or relation should be built in the second phase. Now there should be some design expert who will transform the conceptual schema to the actual data schema on the database. So to transport the conceptual schema into the actual schema, we need that to have an actual value. So to have actual value, we need to again do a survey that what information we have on a particular enterprise, what information to the max we can put on it. So after fetching all the details, we will move to the next phase that is the logic phase and physics phase on that particular database designing. So the logical phase generally consists of putting constraints, conditions on the conceptual as well as the actual schema so that we can specify all the fields very precisely. See for an example that the amount that is deposited to an account or a savings account should have the minimum value of 500. So we can put a checking constraint that amount should be greater than 500 in that particular field. So if I want to enter 300 in the deposited amount, it will show me an error because I am trying to put an erroneous data in the database. So the logical phase deals with all the conditional, the integrity, the referential constraint that we can put in the database to make it more precise and more correct. Now we will deal with the physical phase. The physical phase of the designing which is the ultimate phase of designing a database. That means we are almost there to find a perfect database. So to find a physical phase of the database, we need to put the actual values on the logical phase and combine it to form a perfect database. So when the values will be put into the database, Conforming to the logical part to it, next we will have that we are specifying only the values that will serve the need for the design of the database. 
so we can have the values or without the values that we have made a perfect database it is possible even that we have perfectly designed a database but without the physical values now when we put the physical values in the database then we can see that what are the problems that we face while the user will use the database so in this way the values will be put to the database just to check that what is the physical acceptability of the database to the user if the it is user acceptable then we will just transfer the database into the user system to have their own values real life values to be stored into the database and fetch moduli and then update the database according to their need so this is for the design phase of the database now we should talk about the design alternatives obviously that there are two people on the designer hand then the two people will be think on the database into different way now which way we should choose we should always choose a way that will conform to the need on the database it can happen that one database is obviously different from the other one like the banking enterprise the need or the sectors of the banking enterprise is entirely different from the university enterprise so when we are designing the banking database we need to think about something more related economically or monetary transaction whereas the university will have the monetary transaction as well as the academic transactions on it so the designing will be altogether different so the alternatives that we will confirm to the need of the database has the following restrictions the first restriction that we should pretend in every database that we can design is a redundancy redundancy generally means the duplicacy of data say for an university enterprise we are mentioning the course offerings and the course name in every of the department then that the data will be redundant so what are the problems of redundant data the first problem of redundant data is that we are actually taking a much more storage than we need in physical one like when we talk about a course say for 101 that is economical physics now when we talk about it it can refer to the university by any of the student by any of the department no need to specify that course 101 for physics course 101 for chemistry course 101 for economics we just say that course 101 that will refer to the all university departments and among all students now if redundancy is allowed in your database then it will put the data in each of the department the second problem with the redundancy is when we try to delete an information now if you want to update or delete an information that is being a redundant one in the database you need to delete it from every part that it was introduced so where we can put just on one single deletion or updation in the database without the redundancy now we have to put redundant data and delete it from every possible relation that has the data so we need the use of referential integrity that in one relation i will refer to the details of the data in in other relations we will refer to only the unique key or primary key on the relation to have access to the details on the data like if we make a relation course that will contain all the course details for all the departments now in the department we should refer to the course id that is course 101 course 202 from students field also we will refer to the course id to get connected to the relation part course on the database so in this way redundancy should be avoided by using the referential integrity on that purpose the next part is the incompleteness while the bad design also consists the incompleteness of data in a database 
what do you mean by incompleteness incompleteness suggest that there are some data which is missing from the database and which is also important to the database now again take an example of the course offerings we have mentioned the course offerings in the relation course of the database but has not mentioned the course name so it is not wise to use the course offerings or the course id without the course name because if a student does not know that which course offerings is actually referring to which course or the course name then how he or she can choose among the courses so it will definitely be a problem on this type of incompleteness in the data while designing the database. So if that is mentioned that we can leave the course name field as null where course offerings is not null, then it will actually create a problem because if someone is inserting a null value in the course name against a valid course ID, then we cannot fetch the course name of that particular course ID and it will definitely create a problem. So incompleteness should be altogether avoided for designing a good database. Now that are the alternatives that we took to design the database and avoid the bad design of a database. Now it is not always useful to only avoid the bad design of a database. We should choose among the good designs that which is the one to best to design the particular need on the enterprise's database. Now an alternative which is considered to be the best among the good designs of a database always contain the specification of the functional requirement of the database. Say suppose that a person buys a product. So now here we can give only the information from the customer side that buying a product but we also need it from the sales side otherwise the functional requirement is not fulfilled because sale is something that is relative to both the customer and the product so we need to put the sales relation referring to the customer as well as referring to the product so in this way we should choose among the alternatives of the good design too just not avoiding the bad designs now we have designed successfully on this alternatives and by the design phase that is gathering of data collection of the particular conceptual schema improving it to an actual database schema and dividing it to the logical phase based on it constructing the physical phase and now after that the basic design has been compiled we should choose among the good designs following to avoid the bad designs so that is all for designing process on a database thank you for watching this video stay tuned with ikira and subscribe to ikira